Hey everyone, welcome to the shop. Very exciting day as I'm adding a 3D printer to my shop. I know 3D printers have been around for years. Lots of people are completely familiar with them, but lots of other people have never made the jump and I was one of them. This is the Creality Ender 3 version 2. So full disclosure, this unit was provided to me at no cost by the people at banggood.com. However, they do not have any editorial control over this video. They are not seeing it before it's being released. They just care about the fact that I release it at all and tell you about it. So the prices have come down a lot. This, this is about $260 US right now. And I know people are gonna ask about shipping, um, which is a really hard question to answer because of the whole 2020-21 COVID pandemic affecting everything. But it, it was shipped from the US and it took two weeks to get here. I'm in Canada, by the way, so yeah. Wow, we this is this is solidly packed in foam. So here we have the user manual, which I am definitely going to need to look at because, as I mentioned, I've never owned one of these before. And this is a partial kit. There are a few things that I need to assemble but most of it is together already. Here's the control panel and what we got here? There we go. First get that out. Yeah, so the whole base unit is already together and I think that's it for the box. Oh, no, there's more. <laughs> but wait, there's more. North American style power cord. Tools. Knife. Oh, here's another motor. More parts, more parts. And, and, oh, that's, that's a uh, lead screw. And, yeah, so that's it for the box. Just one more look at the packing. This was in the bottom. And then this piece, and then this piece was upside down. I think something like this. This is, this, is, this is really, really, really well packed. Okay, here I've got all the parts laid out. If seeing a set of parts like this kind of makes you nervous, then you might not want to buy the kit. You might want to look for a fully assembled 3D printer and you, know, you can get other kinds. So the first thing I did is I carefully went through the parts list, made sure that everything was included. So about four or so years ago, I put together one of the early X-Car CNC units from Inventables. That was a lot more intimidating than this because it was nothing was put together. And I made it work. So I'm very hopeful that I can get this to work too without too much fuss. I've seen some videos of people assembling it. I mean, I don't, I don't think this is that insurmountable. To be honest, I, I would have preferred a fully assembled unit. I think a lot of people would prefer that, um, but it is what it is. Install, install, install. Okay, I'm going to take a few minutes and have a good read on this and then we'll see how I will get started. First, I noticed there was a bit of rocking on mine. And when I flipped it over, there was a zip tie up here that had been pivoted. And when I was able to sort of twist the zip tie out of the way, and then I have a nice stable flat base. I tried it on the table saw first, which was nice and flat to confirm that. Z-axis. And yes, I said Z-axis. Leave a bit of wiggle room. Z-axis limit switch. Z-axis motor goes here. Threaded rod. Make sure it's vertical. And now tighten these. The X-axis assembly. Take the hot end assembly. Make sure the nozzle's pointing down. And that goes on to the channel. Idler assembly on this end. Next the belt. Out the end, back through. 
and then it connects to the hot end. Take the pulley from the end and disassemble that. Now we can feed the belt around the pulley, and then this goes back in. Screw on the front, put this bolt back in the back, put the tensioner knob back on, back to the extruder, and slip it in. Now this should slide. Check the belt, and you can put a bit of tension on there. These wheels go over the bar, and then you gotta, gotta get this lead screw, and it goes into this brass bushing here, and we will just spin it. Top brace, and with the gantry at the bottom, we tighten the bottom screws, and then move it to the top and tighten the top screws. Display bracket, take the cable, plug it in. Oh yeah. Spool holder. One end cap, two end caps. Brass coupler on the extruder. Push the tube in firmly and spread this little piece out and put the little clamp in there. Put the knob, Z-axis motor, Z-axis limit switch, E for extruder, X for the X motor, the X limit switch is inside. Oh, my fingers are too big. The little clip here to hold the wire up out of the way. Around back, we find the voltage setting. I'm in Canada, so I need this to be slid over to 115, 110. Oh, yeah. And you get to do it again. Nope. Oh, it's so shiny. This is glass. I thought it was another cover. It has these odd little clips. So for leftovers, they gave me one extra bolt of each kind. I will keep those as spares. That can go in the little storage drawer. There's an extra nozzle, there's an extra brass thing for the extruder, and an extra clamp. That can go there. A little pin for cleaning out the nozzle. And all the tools. And still some zip ties, which, I don't know. I will put them with my shop zip ties. This fits. This does not. Hey, I'm going to reach back. First time powering it on. Now just to be clear, this is not a touch screen. You turn the knob and it will move the icon to where you want to be and then you push the button to select the item that you're putting on. It is not the greatest contrast. If I'm at any sort of an angle, I'm not seeing it. I need to be directly above it. It shows up really well on the screen, but like for instance this, if I'm standing off to the side by a foot and a half, I don't see that. I mean, I can read the eye, I can't, I can't see the highlight. I don't know if I can fix the contrast at all. Firmware 1.0.1, Creality.com, 220 by 220 by 250, that's the, that's the printing size. It's telling me how warm things are. I need to spend some time in the manual. So with the build done, the next step is to obviously try it out. And you can actually hear it running right now. Um, I went on to Thingiverse, I, well, pardon me. I watched a couple of videos, I read a little bit of documentation. I went on to Thingiverse and I got the little calibration cube it's called. It's just a little 20 centimeter by 20 centimeter cube with an X, Y, and Z on the faces. And I loaded it into the Cura Slicer software and just sort of went with the defaults and loaded it onto the machine and it didn't work. So the first thing it did is it printed this skirt around the outside and that was already starting to move. And then when it moved to the middle and started laying down the base, you could just see like this is supposed to be in the middle there. So I, I aborted that and I re-leveled the plate a bit. It didn't seem like I did too much. And then I fired it up and we are pretty much three quarters of the way finished and it's just going perfectly. It first runs this little string of filament down the edge, goes to the middle and you can just sort of see the skirt like that ring around the outside. And in the middle it's printing the cube. We're currently about 30 minutes in, 11 minutes remaining. 
so yeah, it's not exactly a fast process, but I knew that going in, you know, some of the more complicated prints are going to take hours and hours to go. So I'm, I'm going to need to find a place to put this that is not in my workshop. So this is probably going to get moved to a storage room in the, in the rest of the basement. And there we go. The clock was not exactly 100% accurate because I think it was on zero for like the last minute and a half, but still, there we go. Now it's going to start cooling down automatically. Now, that pops right off. All right, the X, the Y, the Z. Yeah, I am not a 3D pro by any stretch but that's looking really nice and smooth. I can just see a little line here about basically at the top of the letters. I don't know. And uh, I see a bit of a shadow around the Z, but actually I'm not sure if that's supposed to be there, but. So that went together pretty painlessly. I, I know I said at the beginning, I, I really had wanted a pre-built unit, but um, this was really pretty painless. Now. Yeah, I showed some clips of me building it, but I, I really am not intending this as a step-by-step -step video. That would not be fair because I, I am completely a, a complete newbie at this. Um, I'll put a link down below. I found this great video from a channel called Just Vlad, and he had like a 53, 58 minute detailed build. He spent like 10, 15 minutes examining at the at the beginning and then, then the actual build in about 15, 20 minutes at the end where he ran a bunch of prints Highly recommend that video. Um, I'm really impressed with how it came. I, I didn't really have to do much in the way of adjustments. You know, maybe maybe fiddle a bit with some of the wheels that slide up and down the track. That was explained again in the video, but the majority of it was together already. And this is item number three, the Benchy model. It, uh, it struggled at first getting going. CT3D XYZ some issues here on the nose here's a line but not bad this one I did with the Prusa slicer software the previous ones I had done with the Cura it was suggested thanks Dustin that I try this instead you know all this webby stuff I got to clear that out all right so that was the third thing that I printed let me take you back to the second thing and I can show you just how things can actually go quite wrong. So I found this about 40 minutes into the print job. It had completed the base. I'm, I'm printing a lens cap here. I'll talk about that later. And then here, it's like there's this huge glob that happened. And then, you know, then, then the thing just got knocked askew and it was spreading filament all over the place by the time I found it and canceled it. So as I mentioned earlier, printing takes a long time. So I was not just sitting here and watching it. I would. I started the printer, watched it for a few minutes to make sure everything was going well, and then I left the room and I came back and I checked after 15 minutes, everything looked good, and then I came back after like, like I said, about 40 minutes, and there was that mess. And I'm still, I mean, so I didn't actually see it happen, so I'm kind of left guessing. Um, so I'm not 100% sure what happened, but I traded some messages with, a, with an online friend and I did some Googling and it seemed to have something to do with uh, the Z hop and retraction, which uh, has to do with um, how the printer will slightly pull the filament back and lift the head when it's you know jumping from spot to spot and not printing. And um, yeah, it, it looked like this thing would probably lift it from the bed and then the head of the print nozzle had just hit it, jammed, and then that glob happened. But then after I made those changes, the next printout came off perfectly in about an hour and a half. So I've been trying to figure out what to say for final thoughts. And it occurred to me that maybe talking about this thing was a great way to wrap this up. This is a rear lens cap for a Konica AR lens. This belongs to my son. He's been recently getting into film photography, so he picked up a secondhand Konica camera and one of the lenses was missing the rear lens cap. Um, and yeah, it's an off-brand, so the parts aren't necessarily that easy to find and it's an old camera. And I went looking on eBay and it's like, yeah, you could find one. It'd be $15 plus shipping plus waiting for it to show up. Instead, we jumped on Thingiverse. We found that somebody had made a model of one of these lens caps uh, almost 10 years ago, 2012. Downloaded it and yeah, we had the one mess up. 
but then the other one turned out perfect. So after, you know, about three hours, I had a perfect replacement for my son. That cost us, you know, it was about 30 grams of filament, which works out to maybe 75 cents. And it sort of strikes me that I think that's one of the points of 3D printing is to be able to generate a special purpose item for like a limited need, a limited special purpose need that, you know, that's not mass produced somewhere. And, and yeah, probably experienced 3D printer people are just laughing at me because I'm sure I haven't even begun to scratch the surface. So other final thoughts. You know, I, at the beginning, I wasn't thrilled that it was a kit, but it really, putting it together was not that bad. Um, my unit was really well tuned right from the factory. I mean, once I got it put together, it worked. You know, there, were, there was not a lot of fuss, a lot of, a lot of adjusting that had to be done, very minimal. And I, I was, you know, you saw it, you know, like my, my second attempt turned out good. Um, there are cheaper units out there, but at 300-ish or $260, this is definitely in the lower end. I think, I think I've seen some as cheap as $180 or $200, but which is itself kind of amazing that you can get a 3D printer for that. Um, I've also seen them that are 10 times the price, but really the $300 to $600 range seems to be the sweet spot right now. Um, and, and I think that's it. Um, I don't even know what I'm gonna do with it. Um, I think this is one of these things that in about six months, I'll just be surprised at the amount of stuff that I've done with it. So thanks for stopping by and we'll see you on the next one. And one more thing, if there's anything in the video that you wanna learn about, just pull down the video description because I've got links to all the stuff down there.